What's up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of Undrafted Views. We're here. We talk sports from the sidelines. And today we're going to talk about the Miami Heat and what's been going on with their season so far. Let's get into it. You know, not a whole lot has been going on with the Miami Heat. I feel like the last time we did a video on Miami, not much has changed other than Jimmy Butler coming back. Yeah, it's really, it's really sad. I, 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 I don't want to watch the demise of the Miami Heat. I don't want to watch it. I want them to get it together so we can get back to great basketball. So yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. We're talking about the Eastern Conference champions. We're talking about the Eastern Conference champions. Now, I know that they have been riddled with injuries. I do understand that health and safety protocols have really, really impacted their team. And I think that has something to do with where they are right now and how they're performing. It's the residual effect. And and clearly, Dragic being out. Yeah. You know, he is such a crucial piece. I know you always say in KD, you trust, but in Jimmy Butler, I trust to turn this thing around. Really? Yeah. I just believe in him because really the Miami Heat are night and day. When he's on the court, it's like they play with a with a sense of freedom and, and discipline that we do not see when he's out. Yeah, yeah. That that that's true. That's true. I wonder if Jimmy Butler will get tired of losing. Like, what does that look like for him? And how will he be able to rally the rest of the roster together for them to get on board? Because losing impacts confidence, you know? Mm -hmm. And so this is when Udonis, <laughs> hi, hi. This is when I need for you to show up. Like your leadership right now. And you may be doing that. Of course, we don't see that because you sitting on the bench and, you know, sidelines. So that's fine. But Th this is where it matters, right? And so Spolstra, I mean, what is it, Eric Spolstra? Is he you part of the issue? I was thinking it's, it's he might be part of the reason why they keep losing games. He's been there a long time, nice and comfy in South Beach. Yep. Pat Riley, he might need to put a little fire under Eric. Don't yep. get too comfortable, you know? Right, right. I expect, I expected them to be ranking in the top six. That's what I expected. Now things happened and some of that stuff is uncontrollable. And yes, those are reasons, not excuses. I believe hopefully they'll be able to move up quickly um, again as other teams perform. And, you know, the season is still, you know, mid season. And before we know what the new list will come out with the next uh, schedule of games. So hopefully by that time they would have recovered but they're going to do you think they need to make moves before the trade deadline to help Absolutely. get this team spark back up? Absolutely. Who they need to bring in? I'm not exactly sure. I like I like Andre Drummond's pickup, but they don't need him because you got Bam and Precious holding yeah. down the center position. But mm -hmm. I think Drummond would fit in so well. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a John Collins or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me go again. Yeah. Yeah. Can they um, call up Phoenix and get Jay back? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you think Jay would? No, but the, uh -huh. one, of, one of the biggest, I think, uh, d this discerning things that happen, Jay is no longer on the team. So, yeah, they should have paid him. They should have paid him. Come mm -hmm. on. You know you can find that money. Yeah, they could have found it. What's going on with Duncan Robinson? He's been struggling as of late. He had probably one good game out of the last 10. He's really struggling. And he might be getting tired of losing himself. Right. When will they ever sit Robinson down? Nah. Because no. who's next up? I mean. Hence is my issue with the heat right now. Who's next up? I talked in a previous video. I don't know if you guys, you guys need to go watch the video that we talked when we spoke about the Warriors. And one of the things I mentioned in that video was that Steph Curry has a creative way of finding his spots. And he does it in such a way that although it may seem chaotic, he gets there and he hits. Duncan Robinson, for some reason, for me, is just running around the floor. What, what does the coaching staff need to do to help him connect again? 
Mm. Yeah, because he plays so well in a bubble. Oh my gosh. You know, yeah. I heard somebody mention, do we have bubble blinders on when we're looking <laughs> at the heat? Bubble blinders. Bubble blinders. And I'm like, that's a pretty neat phrase because I think we take the bubble uh, production and now they're no longer in the bubble. And and now we're looking at players like, what? Yes. Same what happened? Guy. Like, yeah. Same guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Was it that they didn't have enough time preseason or before the games started for them to do training camps and look at film and, you know, and what is all that? I, I don't know if that is impacting how, you know, the inconsistencies of Duncan Robinson, the inconsistencies of Tyler Hero, you know, because they have their spurts of great moments. Yes. And then you're like, what happened? Where did it go? <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's that inconsistency that makes it really hard. And when you start giving up leads, it reminds me of how the Clippers were in the bubble, right? It's almost like the reverse. You know, you're yeah. like, all oh, three, the th- third quarter, they looking real good. Mm-hmm. And, and then you, they turn, the other team turns around a 15 point deficit. Like what, 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 what yeah. happened? So that's what I'm saying is it's, it's that. And it's hard to watch when the expectation that I have for the heat is much higher than what I'm actually seeing. Mm-hmm. You know, Tyler Hero has been in and out, in and out, I think twice within probably three to four games based on health and safety protocols. Yeah. It's hard to catch a rhythm when you're mm-hmm. up against that. So mm-hmm. I do feel a little, you know, empathy for Tyler and the whole crew, I even do. Eric Postra, you know. I do. This is just bad. You know, the Miami Heat are battle tested. We know what they can do once they start clicking on all cylinders. But I just wonder, like, is this not the year? You know, sometimes you just have a down year. Is Mm -hmm. this not the year for the Miami Heat? I think if that was determined, I would be okay with that, considering the reasons that I mentioned before. Health and safety protocols. We're talking about Jimmy Butler has been out through, I believe it was an ankle, and then health and safety protocols. Mm -hmm. And then you have Drew. I guess that's out. The, the starting lineup has been inconsistent. has had to make adjustments almost every game. Like it mm-hmm. is hard to create chemistry, continuity, and positive production when you don't know what to expect when you get to the arena. So it is difficult. It is difficult. And I think that if they are unable to make it to the play-in tournament or the playoff period, then I kind of give them grace. I yes. don't want that for them. I wish they, I want them to make it and compete at a high level as they did last season, but I get it all the same. I do understand. Right. Now, Avery Bradley and Myers Leonard are both out. They've been gone for so long. I kind of forgot they were even on the team. Until you mentioned it. That's what I'm, mm-hmm. that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about, I, I don't know if they have, they're probably one of the teams that has had to deal with this type of injury and health and safety protocol issues along with the Dallas Mavericks. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's hard to recover from that. And so, although we want them there, maybe this year it's just a wash. Yeah. Yeah, We start over, you know, and that's just what it is. The good thing about this year being a down year or a wash is that they'll get a pretty high draft pick. Hey, you know. And and that's not always a (laughs) win-win. I know. But I, I believe in Pat Riley and his ability to pick the top talent. If it so happens that they get, you know, the top three, top three pick in a 2021 draft. I'm not mad at it. No, I'm not mad at it. But if if that happens, let it be because they fought hard and didn't get it. Not mm-hmm. because they gave up. I yeah. don't want to see them give up. That's mm-hmm. what I don't want to see. I don't want to see you not work as hard as though you were in the playoffs, although you didn't make it. I want every mm-hmm. game to be the dog fight, the grit that we know the Miami Heat can give. That's what I expect to see when they get on the court. Yeah. That's heat culture. So that's what exactly. you're mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I want that every time you get on the court. Now, it depends on who's going to be on the court. And you can't <laughs> control that, but you can't control your effort. And that's what I want them to continue to do. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. The, the Miami Heat are on the clock. You know, time yeah. is a ticking for them. And I, I think maybe Pat Riley should come on down from the booth. I just, you know, just, just for, you know, next three games. Yes. Sit next to Eric Spolstra. Give him some, you know. Some insight on what he's seeing from above. Yeah. Real time, though. Not after the game. Not what he should do before the game. Real time. (laughs) 
We'll see what happens. Drop down in the comments and let us know what you think the Miami Heat need to do to turn this season around. Yeah. Is Jimmy Butler enough? Like, mm. should he really be the number one option? Thank you all for tuning in. We will see you guys on the next one. But until then, peace. Peace, y'all.